Good. First of all, I would like to welcome you all being here. I think we have fit the perfect critical mass. Everyone is having a seat. Yes, uh, which is good. Anyone? Yes, everyone sitting there. Wonderful. I would like to thank first our speakers who are there and who are willing to share their knowledge with us so we can sit here, listen and getting uh, being inspired. Second, I would like to thank Hubraum for this because they provide us with the location so we all have opportunity to sit inside and not being outside in the cold. And so to the ag agenda first, I will give a brief introduction, only three slides, I promised. And then we will have 20 minutes for each of the speakers. If the speakers are faster than 20 minutes, maybe we have a little bit of questions. If they need more than 20 minutes, please ask your questions later. Um, after the speakers, we will have a small bio break. I know that the attention span of most people is limited. So uh, yes, then you will have time to check your phone, yes, uh, get some fresh air or get something to drink. And after this, we will finish with a panel discussion, roughly half an hour. Then we will open it for the public open end and during the panel discussions you can ask the questions you want to. Also you're invited to, you know, to tweet in between if you have questions, let's, <coughs> we will see if they, uh, if the speakers check their accounts. So, I would like to start um, with a book I have read recently uh, by William Hurtling, written in 2011. He's a programmer and is doing a self-publishing over Amazon. And um, in the book, there's this avocado core. I can't even pronounce it. It's a terrible name for a book, and I really I recommend to him to change it one day. Um, so there's this company who's providing email services to one billion people and is having a search engine. And there's a developing team. And the developing team is working on a feature to make email smarter. So they use, in modern words, um, natural language processing with recurring neural networks and long term term memory. This is how we pronounce it today. So they use an expert system. The system is taking every email which is out there and is making the use of the email uh, recommendation, how to respond to get a better answer at the end. And in the moment in this book when the system is rolled out, the system starts to improve, learns a lot, and starts to learn human communication, and we have the first AI. This is the plot of the story and goes on for four more books. And why do I tell you this? Well, in 2015, Google came out with a feature they called um, Smart Reply. And by now, if you use Inbox Google in English, uh, the software already knows how you could respond to your email before you have read it yourself. So for me, this moment was like, well, that's pretty cool. Like in the book, where's the singularity? Where's the AI? Well, I didn't see it yet. It's not there. I didn't feel it. I didn't hear about it. But I learned in this moment that these technologies, in which are in science fiction, yes, will come out one, two, three years later. And that's why I call them even science facts. Um, so, second slide. This is one of most favorite slides. It's from the blog Wait But Why, and if you don't know the blog yet, I can highly uh, recommend the two articles about artificial intelligence revolution. So, one question I have for you today is, what is the singularity for you? Because some people say the singularity is somewhere there when computer performance is meeting or exceeding human performance. So, singularity could be the moment when you realize you can't live without the machines anymore. So, your grandparents, if they have a pacemaker, they're already out. Yes, and um, ask your kids if they can live without a smartphone. And think about if you still could do your job if you don't have a computer. Um, second, the AI could be the mo uh, the singularity could be the moment when we humans lose control of our own creation. So it could be the version which Hollywood is uh, trying to paint Terminator or Matrix. However, the moment when we don't know what we have created or we can't control it anymore. Or could it be the moment when we believe that a machine is superior to a human? Then I ask you, what does it mean? Today already, machines are stronger than we are, physical. Machines are faster than we are, walking, sprinting, you know, moving, they're more enduring. And I would say in a lot of fields, machines are even smarter than we are. They play better chess than we are. They can drive better car than most of us. Yes, um, they are pretty good in, uh, in Go, and they are amazing good uh, recent times in, you know, uh, seeing cats and pictures. So, um, and I can tell hours about all the recent studies which came out, and Google and Facebook are doing amazing jobs, what they came out with AI can do in the last times. So, the question is, why do we do this? Yes, why do we create something which could be a threat for ONS? Why do we create an intelligence and work so hard on this? And my answer is because we are lazy. We humans are lazy. Yes, we're 
our history of humankind is full of tools and inventions for two purposes. Either we want to work less and let someone else do the work, especially a machine, or we want to use the same energy and have more output at the end. And where does this lead to is my last slide. Everyone who signed up, I asked, what kind of jobs could be replaced by machines AI? And I got hundreds of answers, and I tried to come up with the 21 most mentioned ones. And we have there a group, I would say, are the more motoric jobs. Yes, we have cab drivers, everyone mentioned the drivers, uh, baristas, farmers, security guards, mostly in the low end, pen, uh, low end of payments. But we also had a lot of mentions who say, well, teachers will be replaced. We don't know, need the lawyers anymore. And a lot of people always have said that we have doctors, especially surgeons, who could be replaced. And it is, you have surgeons who train for 20 years and then there is a software coming out who is recognizing brain cancer within a second and he needs 20 years to learn the same. And his brain can't be replicated in his knowledge. On the other hand, we have a lot of, I would say, thinking jobs. Yes, investment analysts, financial analysts, stock traders. I mean, who still has a stock trader? Yes, most is already done electronical. Data scientists, even these are new jobs. These jobs could be replaced by AI soon too. And the, the last group where a lot of fitting in. And I would say these are the office jobs. Yes, your grand-grandparents were farmers and your grand-grandparents after, the, or the, you know, their kids were maybe uh, working assembly lines. Today, most of us work in the office and everyone who's sitting in front of a computer is only or a lot of times putting in data, but this can be replaced too. So we speak about jobs who, um, who are systematic, who have a pattern, where data is there and where, needs, uh, where decisions are coming out of data. So I don't want to tell you only about what jobs we don't have. Um, the positive side is some people already mentioned what jobs won't be replaced and everything which has to do with emotion yes, is still good. So if you're in people business, this is good. We haven't solved this. Also, all the jobs cre uh, in combination with free thinking, independent thinking, creativity, we haven't solved yet. But why? Well, we haven't solved AI for these topics because we don't understand it yet. We ins people in science don't understand how creativity is created, how where it's coming from. And the whole thing about feeling, especially for us men, is sometimes pretty tricky and women are ahead of us there. Yes, this is not solved in the physical, you know, the, the, in, the, in the scientific way too. So since until we haven't solved it for ourselves, it's how to program a machine to feel like something we expect it to do. So, the last question on this slide I have for you, and I told you only three slides, is we will come to a phase where 50% of the jobs which we have today will be done by, hu uh, by machines. It doesn't mean that everyone will be replaced, yes, it will just mean that Machines are supporting the system and we will hire less people. And in present times, a company needs a tenth of the employees it used to have yes, to create the same output. So for more wealth for everyone, we need less people working. So the last question for you is, what do we humans do with all the free time we have there? And now I would like to give to Ronnie.